Well, hi there. You're back here with old Barry. And as I usually like to do, I like to pay my respects and thanks everybody for help spreading us out. Uh, we have never had such wonderful numbers, even though they're small, they're growing. And that's what's important. You know, it's like uh, momentum. There's a lot of uh, pertinent laws to momentum. Anyway, here we are, uh, May 6th, and uh, we're on day 51 of stupidity in America under lockdown. And, uh, well, Again, we're going to stay behind for a little bit, but in the DR, it's day 45 of being bewildered and lost. Okay, well, the only way we're going to know who really wins this race, which you don't want to, is at the end of it. We'll see how long uh, once one nation stops and how long it takes the other one to catch up. I bet you we'll be about six days behind. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, hey, this an old Barry a couple years ago kind of coined a phrase, and uh, it's really pertinent to today when you, you read a headline like that. Oh, my God, is that scary, eh? Uh, I'm going to get into this and a few other things. But uh, a couple of years ago, I coined a phrase, and it said, sheep were bred to be led. And, you know, if you ever want a more prominent time or a more fitting time to use that, I would say right now. Hey, listen back there, guys. That's a farm truck driving around with a speaker on. So boy, uh, cinco pesos, onions, five pesos, and this is this is our life. They'll have 15, 20 different things on there, and they'll be driving around with his old little bull box loudspeaker. So boy, uh, manzana, uva, and I mean, life goes on. So again, just uh, sidetracking, I know I am, but it's because you probably heard that speaker in the back there. That's how things get along in the country here. Everything's growing a couple of miles away. So yeah, we might not have like um, Walmart convenience, you know, where everything's like in one place, but we sure do got sustainability. Kind of like a new car, you know, you might have 26 computers on it, and if one fails, you're dead, but, you know, having something older... You know, the old years and years and years ago, I mean, like you file the points and the thing runs. So what, you know, that's what you're looking for now is sustainability. Anyway, listen, let's jump into this because I got a few pieces of information. I'm going to have to go back and forth to my screen. So please excuse me. I'm not uh, ignoring you. But um, if this doesn't shock you, I'm kind of giving up, folks. Uh, I don't know. A bigger example. Okay, Ferguson resigns after getting caught secretly sex meetings with a married woman while he has destroyed the world economy. Okay, um, I'm going to, Leanne, as always, she's going to link it up here, okay? But I'm going to leave this here. Now, okay, th this is what starts here, okay? The very same scientist... The very same scientist that led to Boris Johnson introducing the lockdown in over in England in the UK, okay, himself breaches his own his own restrictions, his own quarantine and lockdown restrictions. See, a clear definition of a psychopath, I don't think you could get. Okay, this is action. You can actually see it. What he's done. It's not even something that's just merely in print. The man physically committed and broke every lockdown rule he said. From distancing to this woman got on public transportation or this or that. And I'll let you read the article. I'm not going to waste my time with it. But this is exactly about exact people. When people are tricked. The technology today, it makes it easier to lie to 5 billion people than it is to convince them they've been lied to. And that is dangerous, folks. So spread this news around. This ain't my views. This isn't Dr. Bashir. This isn't London Real. This is all of us trying to help humanity do your part. Because sheep were bred to be led. So obviously we got to be in front of their faces every day. Uh, I, I just, I'm going to let Leanne link that, but listen, um, moving on here. Okay. Let's go into another article. Uh, uh, again, just strong evidence here. Global mortality associated with seasonal influenza, not COVID influenza. 
Okay, epidemics. Now, I'm going to, again, Leanna link it. I'm not going to make this a, a five-hour post here. Background. Recently, until recently, the World Health Organization, those, those pirates, those same pirates, estimated the annual mortality burden of influenza to be around a quarter million to half a million, okay, globally. Read that. Uh, uh, 250,000? to 500,000 deaths globally. Where's the lockdown? That's my question, where's the lockdown? Okay, in 217, indicated substantially higher mortality burden at 290,000 to 650,000. My God, anyway, this is from standard flu worldwide, folks. Why get this information in front of people? And if people still refuse to do this, understand where their mind is at. Don't get angry at them. I'd say feel sorry for them, maybe. But don't beat up on them, especially because a lot of them are going to be your friends and your family. Don't beat up on them. Carefully just start distancing yourself, okay? But uh, my goodness, it, uh, it's where is the lockdown? With, with just these numbers alone, these are government stats I'm providing to you guys. I, I just, I'm asking where where was the lockdown? Look at the numbers for influenza. There is no pandemic here. Um, mm. From this article, though, I want to expand and touch on another thing. Okay, we have all become, or a predominantly majority of us have become information junkies, and that's also dangerous. Being an information junkie to a certain extent is going to leave you on the tracks with your cell phone on. I'm going to give you another one of my analogies that I often use to explain things so people get it clearly. But with so much information at our fingertips, the question really is the accuracy of this information, not the abundance of it. Because a ton of SH is really, you know, a ton of SH, right? And uh, a couple ounces of the yellow metals worth a little bit more than that. So it's not always the mass or the size. It's the quality and it's the trueness. So um, here's here's another thing many of us, I notice on uh, the thousands of people that come to meet old Barry. And that is here. I want you to picture this, okay? This is where a lot of your heads are at right now. You want to find out if the Amtrak train goes from, let's say, it's an example, New York to Philadelphia, okay? But, you know, you're standing on the track while you're doing it. You just happen to be crossing the track, and you go, wow, you know, I've always wanted to take Amtrak. You stop, park right there, and what do you always do? Head right to the drugs, right to the thumb drugs, all right? You start labeling it in. There's a train coming down the track, though. It's about five miles away, and Amtrak, okay, New York to Philadelphia. Damn, they do got it right on. How much are the tickets? Well, I wonder if they got a food cart. Oh, they got a whole food, a whole food uh, cab. Wow, they got dining. Okay, how much is a burger? Hey, geez, do you know a burger's twenty six bucks on this train? How much is a coke? And here comes the train, splat. Okay. This article now spreads from there. All I'm interested in is the deaths. I don't give a damn. Pardon them all. I don't like to see death in anything. I'm not repeating that again. There's no time for that, wasting that. To get my point across, I'm not interested how many died from a lower infection, how many died from an upper infection. I'm, I want to know how many died from the influenza flu. The numbers are right there. Then the question becomes, where is the lockdown? And does this action warrant the threat? Okay, let's keep. What happens when you do something like this is you create issues that just lead to poor decisions. Um, I'm going to go also here and I'm going to rank this in here. I want to take you into something else now, a little bit completely different, okay? Because uh, I want to bring you into, I have several different pop-ups today, and it's it's important that we, we touch on all of them. Okay, another thing I want to touch on right now, and I'm going to let Leanne post it all to you. Uh, there you go. I'll just highlight this too right here. The rest of it you'll read on your own. 1979 to 2014.
13. Okay, we have the average suicide. 20 veterans die from suicide a day average. In the U.S. military, since 1979 to 2014, if I dug deeper, I could find it. But uh, the numbers aren't going down, okay? There's a lot of people beginning to recognize in the military that they also were hoodwinked. And when they start to understand the atrocities that they helped commit, again, thinking from the heart, I'm not saying anybody's bad here, guys. Don't, okay, don't take the truth and try and convert this into an insult because I ain't going to live with that. I ain't going to put up with that for five seconds. These are good people. But when good people have been hoodwinked, good people will do awful things. And when these people are catching on with all the media, with what they've actually seen, with what they actually, the atrocities many of them had even committed, when the truth finally comes back, and because they are good-hearted people, they can't live with it, okay? They can't. Then when their own country and their military hospitals and their veteran services lets them down, you know, the same people that are having affairs with wives, you know, that are saying you should be under lockdown, those kind of people. But I'm not going to, I'll let you judge for yourself what you think of them. Uh, when they turn back and there's just nobody there from the government, nobody there who who was there uh, initially helping them get into this. It's, it's kind of ironic how all these talking heads, these politicians, you know, they all wave their flag of their country, but it's always your children that time and time again come back in a coffin underneath those very same colored shards of cloth that they're waving, but it's never their children. Uh, I've yet to... Um, been able to figure that out why so many people but i know it's it's approximately 23 a day now that are committing suicide so that's uh on a day per day per day per day average is the highest uh casualty rate okay so uh it's interesting uh you know the old sign about okay you know okay when you say you're okay that right now Okay, we'll get into symbolism. I'm not going three sixes, but you used to signal okay, and when the, the 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 staff sergeant, the chief, the platoon leader would fill in on people that return from the day's events. If there was nobody killed, there wasn't enough room on the form. Okay, so they used to write okay. It doesn't mean everyone's okay. It stood for zero killed, but there wasn't enough. Okay, well this is not okay. This is not okay. So it's good folks that are banding together that are trying to help the, 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 the weaker minded that do not do research. And I applaud everybody. Again, old Barry's never going to point fingers at anybody. I don't have the right. Nobody has the right to be judgmental. Uh, I'm just pointing out facts. Um, another thing I want to bring on as we move further down. Uh, if you take a look, uh, at the amount of deaths. War, without question, war is a business. It's more of a business than it ever was. Um, wars are now created to last for long periods of time. For example, if you take a look at the Afghan war from 2003 to 2011, you're going to find 3,836 casualties. Okay, that's in eight years. Now. Iraq would take eight years, and it, it wasn't even a victorious war. That's another good question. I asked military, tell me what anybody, tell me, tell me what since uh, Vietnam, what Americans won in the war. And the closest they'll come to me is, uh, is uh, over at, uh, I believe, uh, none. They, actually, they haven't won. They, won they, they were very aggressive in an invasion. But that wasn't a war. They haven't won a war since. So tell me something's not wrong with this. Let's go into Afghanistan. From 2001, right after 9-11, to present. 1,833 casualties. That's 19 years, folks. Start thinking here. Why not 
um, send a few pictures to people you're trying to show the truth to, and I'm not siding. Uh, uh, basically, these are a lot of good people, but they've been hoodwinked. And like I say, uh, you hoodwink a good individual, they'll do some pretty bad things. Show them some before and after pictures. On the, and they're all over the Internet. You don't need old Barry to do this. Okay, uh, take a look at Kuwait. Take a look at Libya. Take a look at what they did to Gaddafi just because he wanted to put his country back on the gold donaire and, and get a, a donar, whatever they call that currency, and get away from the U.S. dollar. Look what they did to him in under a month. Okay? Take a look at Afghanistan. Take a look at Syria. Take a look at Lebanon. Do before and after pictures, and you'll talk about this war on freedom. How do you have a war against a noun? This war on drugs? War on drugs. I asked the same question. How do you have a war against a noun? Okay, I want to just hear, um, if you take a look here, you're going to find out. Uh, let me go here. I had a chart that came up. It was very informative, very, very informative. Let me just scroll down a little bit. There it is. 2001, I'm mousing over 2001, okay? Ah, that's when the war started. Don't take my word for it. The information's there if you want to, okay? All they have done on the public media is and what the people you're trying to help along with this so we can band together and put a stop to this, you know, destroying ourselves. Look at 2001. Hmm, that was the year they invaded. Interesting. War on drugs. Well, I guess they want to promote them. Maybe I didn't know. Maybe I, I always thought they wanted to stop it. I guess they wanted to promote. See how stupid we are? You see how stupid we are? Wow. Look at the tonnage that had came up since America started the next year. And it's been a very successful war ever since. So every year before we invaded, the Americans invaded to stamp out on the opium war. It looks like it's done nothing but go fold and just, I wish I could choose my stocks like that every time. Hell, I'd put Buffett to shame. <laughs> anyway, folks, listen, modern day war is, I know a lot of you know this, but you got to get it out to the others. We're only a couple, a few individuals here, the mentors and Leanne, and we're working day and night to try to do our part. So listen, modern day war was not designed to be won. It was designed to be prolonged. It's because it's a jobs program. Do you really believe these countries are any threat to a country as powerful as America? You've got to believe. See how they can get into your heads? It's amazing. America, if it truly wanted to, I'm not saying it should, it shouldn't. Well, of course it shouldn't. It's none of their business. Their own backyard's full of weeds, and they're worrying about spraying, you know, Agent Orange on everyone else's backyard, right, from the old Vietnam days. My God, wake up. You know, but today's version of warring, it's designed to be prolong the last thing you want to do is win it and um folks I'm, I'm asking that you forward not all the time am i just going to put up videos okay you got uh, people these are prominent prominent articles but my goodness it's just unbelievable the same war dog that they put in to to start all this remember going back to the days i was saying john hopkins the original with all the botched information all of that is what led it led to him and all of this is what closed us down he is a big part Fauci is a big part of why many of you watching me now are going to lose your business and you Damn it if some of it ain't your own fault, too. But I'm doing the best I can to try and get everybody to band together. So please help us. And uh, I never say it's too late, okay? But let's say, man, you know, it's dusk. I'll tell you, the sun ain't at 12 o'clock anymore. Okay, until next time, this is old Barry. Thank you so, so much about spreading all the articles and, and YouTubes. And I'll continue uh, and will continue to do our best to keep bringing forward information that's interesting. Um, I'll lighten it up a little bit on the weekend. We'll joke around and do a fireside chat together. I'll bring you some different 
ways of looking at things, but from Leanne, from John, from me, from all of the subscribers, from everyone, a big thank you for taking your time. You know, uh, time is the greatest gift we can always give because it's the only gift once it's given you can never take back or you can never re-earn. Okay, that's the only commodity once spent is spent for forever. And, uh, you know, I don't know, is forever timeless or is forever a long time? Hey, that could be another video. <laughs> anyway, it's old Barry and DR, okay? Thanks again from all of us. Bye.